Welcome to our next talk with uh, Ramir and Arsh on runtime security and open telemetry. Give them a warm welcome, please. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for coming for our talk. We are going to be talking about security and, in particular, open telemetry and container related security. A uh, quick couple of introductions. Ramir, you want to go first? Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to our talk. Very excited to be at Regex. Always my favorite part of the KubeCon week. Uh, my name is Ramiro. I am the CEO and co founder of Octeto. At Octeto, we build a platform for dev environments on Kubernetes. I am Arsh. I work as a DevX engineer at Octeto. I am also a CNCF ambassador, but all of these are things which, like, um, if you know me, like, you know about this. But, like, there's one thing which Ramiro and me have not shared with a lot of our friends and people from the cloud native community. And that is that we are actually very scared of AI and AI taking our jobs. And that is why a couple of months ago, Ramiro and me just sat together and we brainstormed what could we do like when this AI takeover happens. And both of us are really good at making like telescopes from our hand. We might not look like those people, but it's true. So we came up with this startup where we are going to sell like handmade telescopes. So we worked on this startup, and we have a lot of like good number of outlets all across the world. Like you might not see them, but if you like look closely, you might. Uh, but now we have all of this, and I created the front end for the website. I created the back end microservices and all of that stuff, and he was responsible for deploying it, scaling it, and all of those boring aspects. Uh, but once we did this, business was booming, and we got a lot of sales, we got a lot of traction, and everything was going great. But last night, I got a call from him, and I do not accept calls after like work hours. So, Ramiro, do you mind telling me why you called me? Yeah, well, I was calling you because I was getting all these tickets from our customers. Well, not customers, because they were not able to pay. Because something on the website was failing. Like they were trying to add things to your cart, check out, which isn't working. They really like our telescopes, so they were trying to like buy it. And now business is not booming what that are much. You saying? That uh, is not possible. Let I don't just, know. One of those like late night comments. Let me let me just I did not commit anything. Let me just go to our website and see. Okay, I'm at the product page. Um I am refreshing and uh, uh -oh. everything seems it? to be working. Uh, uh, well, why, why do you keep refreshing when the, when the image is not there? I did not. No, I'm just. Everything is working. It just happened, right? Like, because, are you guys seeing it? Like, it just happened. Stop lying, please. Like, you need to be serious about this. Like, it's, it's there. It's there on the big screen. Like, the image is not there. You don't trust me. Let me just, like, let me just show nope. you the, let me just show you the pods. Like, See the pods? Everything is running. So can you please just stop messing with me and like calling me after work? Step away from the keyboard. This is what you do every time. Let me show you what's going on here. Because I knew this would happen. So yesterday, on my flight from, um, from Oakland, I actually instrumented our code with OpenTelemetry and set up dashboards, collectors, so we can get some real data on what's going on. Because you know, like pods is not all that matters. Like, the pod might be running, but this application we built is very complex. It's a very sophisticated... Application I built. Sure. It's a very sophisticated application I built. Um, and it's not, it's not easy. It's not just the pods. It's not just the logs. So let me show you what this beautiful thing... Okay, let's see. ...gets us to do. So um, we have Grafana. This is something installed yesterday. So the first thing I did is I actually instrumented our code to use OpenTelemetry. OpenTelemetry is a standard that allows you to get um, data in a standard way across different vendors, across different tools. And I like Grafana, it's open source, and I build this great dashboard to show us what's going on with our application. Cool, let's see who's lying, who's not. So now, this is what we have, and if you can see there, we have this beautiful dashboard that I put together yesterday, where you can have, you can see the latency of the services, error rates, request rates, and this is great because we're no longer just looking at logs and waiting for I not would, customers to open tickets angry. I would, I would like to stop you because you're just making a joke out of yourself. See the error rate? It's zero. I told you everything is working. 
your own tools are against you because I am right. Am I the only platform engineers that hate the, talking to developers because they always think it's somebody else's fault? Am I, is, is it just me or anybody here relate to this? This is one of many services. And this is something that, you know, I know that the world of Monolith kind of like was it like that. A single service does everything. But this is a sophisticated website. It has multiple services. So sure, the ad service, it's not Erin, which I'm great because I'm grateful because we get a lot of money from those, those beautiful ads. But if we go and look at the product catalog service, oh, no. you will see that, see this? This is showing us the number of errors per, per second um, on our back end. And you can see here that it's not zero, as somebody was claiming before. And you know, you can see this across every service. That's, to me, one of my favorite parts of OpenTelemetry is now you have this distributed tracing. You can do things across. And that becomes really useful when you're looking at problems like this. Um, here you can see that, hey, payment service is not having data because nobody's been able to pay because they can't load the catalog. Um, but we have more things here. And, and that is the value that I see on this. This is why I spent uh, a good chunk of the 10 hours that took me to get here to build this so that we can have real, clear, self-service data. I'm like, hey, this is failing. So now with this, you know, it's failing. Now it's no longer on me. Maybe for once you are right. Like, but. I, I, but what does this mean? Like, how, how is all of this like working behind the scenes? Like, so before that, and I don't want you to go, go after this call feeling bad. I actually trick you a bit here because, as on top of implementing Open Telemetry, I also implemented Open Feature on our service. It's Feature Flags. It's another standard driven by CNCF, and in this case, I made it fail every now and then, mostly been, to teach you a lesson. You've been lying to me all this time. Lying, educating. Potato, potato, um, and see, this, this, is not, this is a new tool for you because now, in this case, I'm going to put it 100 percent. You can go. You can make it fail all the time. You know, it reproduces every time, like oh. developers log. Oh. Now you can go and and fix it, and then we can set it back to zero. So I don't know about no you, but failures. after this talk, I'm definitely going out to look for more partners. Like I, I am having serious trust issues. Like after <laughs> this, like. Um, well, back to uh, business booming. So what happened here, right? Open telemetry is kind of here to save the day. It's something that is kind of getting more and more notoriety. And it's something very important for all of us to look and, and do. This is roughly, I took this from, um, uh, from Cygnus, which is one of the vendors implementing open telemetry. This is kind of how it looks like behind the scenes. You have collectors. They're kind of like collecting the data, pushing it to a backend. In this case, we're using Jaeger and Grafana to process everything. But you know, there's multiple ways this could work. You can have pool model push, but there's all these other things here. The beauty of this is that it's a standard. So today, we're using Grafana. Today, we're using Jaeger. If at some point, we don't want to run it ourselves. If at some point, uh, it doesn't scale because you know business is booming, uh, we can always switch. And, and that is, is, to me, one of the biggest values that open telemetry brings to, brings to the table. Because open telemetry is an open source framework it's a standard that gives us the ability to have all these tools for collecting, for routing uh, telemetry data. And I, I took this definition from the Datadog uh, website. And it's something that you know, it works all across the board. You can use it for devices. You can use it for your website, like here, backend, any of these things. So why is this conversation more important than ever? I, we feel that, you know, had we been working on like a monolithical application, maybe this topic was not as relevant there because it was just easier to get visibility into the application. Like the entire life cycle of that application was just easier to track, which is not the case with microservices, which is what everyone seems to be shifting to. So if you are working on a really complex app which has different microservices, these kind of things become very important to consider as you are building out your code. Secondly, microservices also increase the attack surface, right? Because now attackers could target one single microservice, whereas you, if you are, if you are not instrumenting your code, if you're not using such solutions, you would not have an idea of like where the attack started, how it propagated, and all of that stuff. 
And lastly, uh, when you use multiple languages and multiple frameworks for different microservices, you need something which aggregates all of this data, and you need a standardization, standardization which provides this data in a form where you can go to any, where you don't get logged into any vendor, right? You have this data, and then you can use this in any form you want. So if you see, like this is the application which we were talking about, and we don't want you to read this graph, but what you want to show is that it is complicated, right? Like there are a lot of things which are at play here, and simply without this tool, it would not have been possible to you know understand what is going wrong and like how things are failing and how is it looking. So that's what I covered. Like you get distributed tracing, which basically means you are able to follow and see how like one thing failing led to the other and how the attack propagated, you get observability, and you get standardization in the terms of like the output you get, the data you get. You can use it anywhere you want. You can use different tools. You can use open source solutions. You can use vendor solutions. So you have the flexibility to do all of that. And, and something I want to like stress is, is real quick here is, is this. Uh, by the way, I'm going to come clean. We do not have a telescope store. Uh, this is the OpenTelemetry demo. I highly recommend you download it, install it on your, on your Kubernetes cluster, run it. Uh, because it's, it's, it gives you a great idea, a good learning space uh, of what modern applications look like. And this is something that, you know, we, I talk about this a lot in our, in our talks. Applications are getting more complex. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, you have multiple services in this case. You have different responsibilities, maybe different language stacks, definitely different databases. So one, one thing is very important as we architect these new applications is to stop going from the, I look at the logs of one app, I look at the logs from our service, and into solutions like this, where we can have much better observability uh, of what's going on with our application. Because this is a demo, it's kind of a dumb demo, you, know, you fail a request. In reality, in production, failures, especially at scale, tend to be a lot more sophisticated. Uh, sometimes they cannot be replicated because it's a race condition, it's something where multiple services maybe are cascading, or, or one of your dependencies it's, it's like flaking. Uh, and that's where this class of tools really, really help. And it took a while. I mean, we've been, we've been doing tracing. And if you've been around, you know there was a before open telemetry. There were other standards that were competing. But more and more, we see, uh, especially CNCF, Kubernetes, really like uh, standardized some days. So I really recommend all of you to start thinking about this, start instrumenting your code, start running collectors, because it's, it's a muscle that you built. And as we learn how to like, troubleshoot applications this way, as we learn how to do it, it'll be a lot easier when, because it's a when, not an if, when you get that page at 2 in the morning that your application is on fire and you don't know what's going on. Uh, the more we use it, the more we try it, and the more we contribute to these tools, the best. Like If you go to the uh, CNCF landscape, we couldn't fit a screenshot because it's so big these days. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of tooling around OpenTelemetry. A lot of companies, vendors, open source, you know, whether you're a build or a buy kind of like person, there's a lot of solutions there. And I really like the fact that it's a standard and that it's not that hard to switch from one to another. Moving your data, moving your history, a whole different story. When you're picking a vendor, keep that in mind. Like, moving the data is expensive. But if you don't care about historical data and you just want to kind of like get your telemetry running from a different place, it's, it's not that hard. And that, to me, gives me a lot of confidence on this space and why this is so important. And, you know, Datadog's kind of like the, the big one, but you know, there's Cygnus, open source, Lumigo, there's a bunch of them out there. I mentioned those because I have friends that work in those companies, so those are the ones I know, but there's like a huge universe of, of open telemetry providers, and it's a really large project, and it's something I really encourage you to look at, contribute, and please start using it, because that's it's gonna make it a lot easier for all of us to troubleshoot our applications, especially when the components you're depending on already come with, with telemetry. Um, but is, is this enough? Do we have open telemetry? Great. Are we off the hook? Are our applications ready to um, play the role? I wish it was the case, but no. Um, security is the other aspect that is very important. When we talk about telemetry, when we talk about observability, many times people think about it from the perspective of just logs. Is my application healthy? Are my API calls re returning where they're meant to return? However, we also need to think in terms of security. Um, here's examples of some of, some of the, like, the members of the CNCF security landscape. This is kind of a, it's been, a while, it's been around for a while in the Kubernetes world, but it's still, I think, 
in its infancy as a, as a community is the idea of cloud native security. So again, some examples of, of tools that I like, Cubescape, Falco, Spiderbat, uh, open source, so there are vendors, but it's also a thriving environment. And it's very important to think of them you know, the same way we think about our telemetry story. We need to, the same way we went from like normal telemetry to cloud native telemetry with, with things like, like Otel, we need to do the same thing when it comes to security. Um, and why this is important? Like this is the same slide we showed before, because I believe the same reason why Otel is important is why we need to think of this as well. Because now it's harder, it's tough to get visibility into the apps. We have an increased attack surface, not only for errors, but also for bugs, for you know, images with like vulnerability. A lot of the times, like the big attacks are not even like because you have problems with your code. It's something in the supply chain. Maybe you have a, a base image that's shipping with a vulnerability. Maybe you're using an old software that hasn't been patched, and, and all those things are very important to consider because uh, we have broader like, applications. Like if you remember, here, this is what like. 10 microservices, yeah, something like that. Each of them has, in this demo, a different base image, a different programming language, different SDKs, and each of them can have issues. So that's, that's where it's really important to think about it this way, because we live in this world of like, visibility is complicated, attack surface is large, and uh, we have a lot of languages and a lot of frameworks that we have to keep track of. And that's where these tools really help. I really recommend you do look at this, look at ChainGuard as well. But think of security the same way we're thinking about observability. It's not, not anymore just one piece. It's as a system, tooling, and, and all those things. And just to drive this point across more, we want to talk about like two CVEs, which are like in projects which you might be using and which were patched. But it's just like to emphasize more on this fact that, you know, this is more common than you would think. So how many of you have heard of like KubeFS? Okay, not a lot of people. But um, so it's basically a file storage system, which is part of the CNCF landscape. But there was a CV there where hackers were able to do a timing attack. And what a timing attack basically is, is that if you are comparing the strings in constant time and not just like you could be comparing raw strings or you could be comparing hashes, but if the comparison is in constant time, then hackers can determine the correct password based on like uh, if it if the comparison is not in constant time, then hackers can determine the password based on how fast you know like whatever they are trying gets rejected. So if you see this graph here, like as each letter gets rejected, I can see the amount of time it got rejected in, and that would give me an idea what the actual password could be. So this is an, a pretty uh, Famous CNCF project. The other CNCF project I'm sure you all would have heard of, and that's Crossplane. Uh, so Crossplane had a CVE where you could uh, specify a base image for a Crossplane package, and that base image could, uh, like, there was no checks, nothing like that. So this is where like something like chain guard could come into picture, where like you get the images from the right places. But basically, the image you specified would take a lot of resources and it would kill the container, and that would basically give people like you know, have your applications failing. So all of these examples were just to reiterate the fact that these are things which are very very important, which you now need to consider when you are thinking about the security or monitoring of your applications. Now we're just going to give like a quick glance of like some things you can use to like m monitor things at a container level. But uh, this is something uh, you can use and like this is like one of the tools we picked, but there are multiple solutions. Like this was from Spiderbat, but um, when you do something like that, you are able to see things on a container level. And basically what we saw using uh, open telemetry for the microservices, this you can see for each services container, and you can see how things are going through the surface. Yeah, and, and we put this as an example, like going back. Imagine that the, the scenario we showed show at the beginning where we were injecting failures. Like this could be also like not somebody injecting failures, somebody trying to use one of our bugs. Um, to get access to the system. In this case, this shows kind of a path for a container escape. And what's important about this and why we put this here is it's about the tooling, right? It's about how can we build this practice of like looking at these things, not from the, is my pod okay? Is this container well-defined? But from a perspective of, I have a system, I have a fleet of pods, I have a, a group of like applications, they're interconnected, how do we look at them? And, and that's where 
this idea of, for me, of cloud native security and open telemetry share a lot of things. Because we're both dealing with like the same thing, a big application spread around, and we want to see that in a systematic way across all these things. And, and that's where like all of this as we show you help, you know, helps with understanding is my application behaving as expected. Uh, you can do things like you can hook up a lot of these tools. Uh, we use uh, at Octeto, we use Armo, uh, and we can hook that up to our alert system to get notifications when like, hey, this container you have has a vulnerability, like, like the ones that, um, that Arsh just showed. Uh, it makes everything more visible and accessible because if, if you go back to the previous, like this, it's a lot easier to understand on a graph than if you're trying to dig up and read through like uh, C skulls in your logs and all that and stuff. You might not even know, like in this uh, cross plane example, had you specified something, like it's really tough to see like where things failed because you might be using multiple cross plane packages and knowing which one triggered is something which you will only know if you have implemented a solution like this in your applications. So uh, we have one more example. And this is you know, going back to what our show, this is an example, it's a screenshot from Cubescape. And this shows you the analysis that they make of Cubescape is the open source version of Armo. And it shows you like vulnerabilities on a certain container. And as Ash was saying, you know, we are taking dependencies on places. It's important to understand what we're shipping. In this case, hey, there are some action requires that the, the tool detected. But what's important is this, right? It's not me going and say every container, I have to review it every day. No, no, you put this on tooling, you put this on, on your observability stack, and just get everything together because this is very important. Security, observability are two aspects of application development that we cannot ignore. It's no longer something you do at the end. You know, there are CISOs, there are security teams, but everybody needs to contribute. And the same way the developers need to be part of the observability story, developers need to be part of the security story. And that's where like these tools, you can say this is like fairly easy to use. We're no longer in the world of arcane tools that only like people with certain certifications could use. Like all of these tools are built with developer experience in mind and really thought for day-to-day -day use. And that was our talk. Thank you so much for listening to us. Um, and we really hope like this talk lets you think about monitoring observability security as first class citizens. And you like if I have like one action item for all of you, which I would really recommend, is go to the CNCF landscape security section, look at those tools, because a lot of those tools have now become, like Ramiro just said, more dev developer friendly and you can really like provide them in a developer self-service way where you just configure them once and set them once like the dashboards he configured for me as a developer. And then your developers can themselves, you know, have the tools to debug problems on their own and you do not have to cater to each and individual respect, uh, request. Um, so once again, thank you, for, thank you for attending our talk and we hope you learned something useful. Thank you very much. Awesome, the two of you. Um, you left quite a few, uh, quite a bit of time for questions. So, are there any questions? <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> awesome. Uh, thank you very much. Comprehensive. No yeah. questions. <laughs> oh, great talk. Thanks again. Yeah.